So today I'm gonna to do a 60 watt Ohm Tech laser review. We've got the machine right behind me. This is a four rear, four rear, four a year review. Uh, I'm gonna let you know the things that I like, the things that I don't like, why it might be a good machine for you, or why you might wanna choose something different to suit your needs. So let's get into it. All right guys, so the most important thing about this machine, in my opinion, is the fact that I can hook it up and plug it in to a 110 outlet. So you don't need 220, you don't need any fancy electrical whatever to be able to operate this machine. So right off the bat, you can plug it in and get going. So the next thing is the cutting surface. When I chose this machine, I didn't want just a small machine that I was gonna outgrow. And of course, this is a middle of the ground one. There are bigger ones and we'll discuss that later. So this one, the cutting surface on this one, let's look at my notes here because I'm gonna cheat today, is a 20 by 28 working surface. So you can put a 20 by 28 piece of material in here but let me show you why you can't exactly engrave or cut that 20 by 28. So let's switch around here. So the main thing is the head. The head is going to travel all the way to the edge. So the 20 by 28 is this right here. It cannot go exactly to the edge. So if you're expecting to cut a 20 by 28 piece all the way up to the edge, you're going to be disappointed. Now, one cool thing, if you are wanting to cut longer pieces, there is a pass through on both sides where you can drop this down and you can run a piece of material all the way through. I've got the bed a little higher so you can't see, but you can run a piece all the way through. I don't have it set up that way because I don't have the room in my small garage, but if you have the room, just know that you can have a piece the width of the machine and then however long uh, you want to cut. Okay, let's talk about the autofocus. So the autofocus is exactly what you think. You hit a button and it automatically focuses. So this red little contraption here is your autofocus and it has this pin. So you can hit the button for the autofocus it will raise the machine until it presses that, engages, and then it'll automatically lower the machine to the distance that it needs to be based on what you set. Now, I don't have the autofocus set, and I'm gonna explain that more on the things that I don't like uh, at the end of the video. So stick around, and I'm gonna explain why an autofocus machine might not be the best, but there's still some good in it. So don't, don't discount the autofocus setting right off the bat. So stick around, I'm gonna explain that. But let's go into the next thing. All right, so I've got the machine turned on, so that's what you're hearing right now. So uh, again, I'm not gonna test or show the autofocus because I don't use it, but one thing that I do use is the lasers. So that is my starting point. So. When I hit that laser, when I pulse it, that's where I'm gonna start. And it's really good to make sure that's in line so that you're not off, you know, a uh, 16th of an inch or, you know, uh, I mean, you could be way, way off. Uh, the other thing is you've got a LED strip in the back, um, gives you some light, so that does help. Uh, ignore the mess. Uh, one of these days I'm gonna clean this, so at least you know that I use it. Uh, this nozzle right here is your nozzle that feeds your air assist. Uh, so uh, we'll go over that here in a little bit on what the air assist is. But that's just a quick setup as far as the head of the laser. You got your nozzle, uh, your lens, everything inside there. But I'm not gonna take that apart, but uh, just know that it's in there. <laughs> All right, and I'm assuming most lasers have this, but if not, just know that the OMTech 60 watt and their other lasers have this. Uh, you have the key to turn on the laser. You have an emergency stop, which you definitely don't get a machine if it doesn't have an emergency stop. That's just dumb. You need an emergency stop because I promise you there's gonna be a case where you need to stop it. It doesn't matter that you run the piece of material, uh, it's the fact that you're being safe and you're avoiding any type of fire 
or if it gets into a jam, you're not destroying one of the stepper motors. So be sure to get one with an emergency stop uh, or at least install one. Uh, the next thing is your controller. Actually, I'm gonna turn this back on. I shouldn't have turned it off. Um, I honestly don't use the controller that much other than these two buttons right here. This is your up and down button and that controls the stepper motor to raise and lower the machine. Um, you've got your origin. That's the other button that I choose. So, well, other than the directional, I guess there's a few. So let's say I've got my workpiece and it's right here. Your origin, you want to press that to set, to say, I'm gonna start right there. If you don't, there's no telling what your machine's gonna do. It could start way in the corner. It could start over here and then it messes up the piece that you're trying to engrave or cut, or it could jam that stepper motor because uh, it's trying to force it into the side. Horrible sound, ask me how I know. So that being said, since I don't really use the control panel for the majority of setting my jobs up, just to let you know, I'm not gonna do a review on it today, uh, but I do use Lightburn, it's, that right there. You can download it for Mac or for PC. So uh, if you're not a Mac guy, PC, vice versa, hey, I'm not mad at you either way. Just know that you can use Lightburn on either uh, either one, Mac or PC, but I use Lightburn, um, real, real user friendly. So the next thing, actually, you know what? Let's talk about the bad. So when you get your machine, it's going to come with air assist. It's going to come with a water pump, everything that you need to get started. At least that's what they say. However, the water pump that comes with it is like a fish aquarium pump. The air assist is like a miniature fan, like a computer fan. Like you're not going to get the PSI that you need for certain materials. And that could cause some fire it could cause a lot of issues with not only safety but the fact that you won't be able to cut certain material now i did go with a full air compressor you don't need anything this big i promise there's other smaller ones i do suggest getting one of the quote unquote like my air quotes uh quiet air compressors because uh if your neighbors live close by you might annoy them with it being turned on all the time. Plus, you might get tired of it as well. But get a larger air assist. Uh, I just cut the line, tapped it into the hose. So I can use this uh, compressor for other things than the machine. Than the machine. Um, so definitely upgrade the air assist. And then, like I said, the uh, water pump. So the water pump on here... Uh, it was it was like a blue bucket and uh, had the fish aquarium pump not good so make sure you get yourself a external water chiller uh, and so I'm not gonna go too much on the water chillers but real quick I do want to explain that the CW 3000 is not a, a technically it's not a water chiller so what does that mean? It does say water chiller on there, but no, it's actually just a water pump that's better. Uh, I live in an area where it's not too hot. I don't operate my machine all the time. Uh, now, if you get a 80 watt laser, then I would highly suggest getting the actual water chiller. Uh, or if you're in warmer or hotter climates, definitely get the water chiller. Uh, yes, it is a difference of from, uh, let's see, $500 for like a 5202, I believe, uh, compared to $150 for the 3000. But I promise you, when you start getting into the higher wattage or hotter, hotter uh, areas, you'll definitely want something to keep that laser tube cool. Okay, real quick on the autofocus. The reason why I got it is because I wanted it to have the stepper motor where I can just press the buttons and raise the bed up and down. I don't use the autofocus feature because I engrave different types of material and I can't be limited to just one height. 
Now the manual focus, you can save a few hundred dollars by getting that one, but you are gonna have a knob, I believe, where you have to uh, rotate it to raise the bed up and down. I didn't wanna fight with that. I'd rather just be able to press a button and have motors that do it for me. So uh, you choose, you may want it, you may not, but just know that uh, don't get the autofocus for the autofocus feature, just my opinion. So that's really my bad, is the air compressor or the air assist and the water pump. I did have to spend more money to upgrade that just so that I know that it's gonna work efficiently and it's safe to operate. Um, of course, like I said, the air compressor, you don't have to go that big. You can get a smaller one, not too bad. But again, two bads out of the whole thing, I think that's pretty cool that OM Tech, for the price point, there's really not much that you have to upgrade. So overall, over the last four years, it's been a great machine. The 60 watt does everything that I need to do. Uh, leather, wood, acrylic, I've done tumblers. Uh, and for it to be around $4,000 for everything, the machine, the air compressor, all the little stuff that I had to add to it, to me is a great value for what I've been able to get uh, out of it. Uh, now for you, the 60 watt might be a great machine or for others, maybe the 80 watt or something a little bigger might be a little better if you're wanting to engrave or cut thicker material. So definitely look into that, what's gonna work best for you. But either way, I don't think you can go wrong with OM Tech. But guys, if you get value out of this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below.